serve. Delicious. There are a long list of activities that are frowned upon when you have an empty stomach. Drinking alcohol, for one. Taking medication, going grocery shopping, and now, apparently, playing video games has been added to that list as well. You can blame Cook Serve Delicious 2 for that last one. The latest cook em up by Vertigo Gaming, and a video game which contains so many lovingly crafted depictions of food, that playing while hungry is tantamount to some ancient form of torture. I mean, just look at this. Between this, Final Fantasy XV, and that one scene with those eggs in Metal Gear Solid 4, food porn has finally found its home in gaming. Cook, serve, delicious. When you boil it down, Cook Serve Delicious 2, like its predecessor, the appropriately named Cook Serve Delicious, is essentially the most stressful game of Simon Says you'll ever play. Just imagine playing WarioWare with Gordon Ramsay, and you'll have an idea of what to expect. From behind the counter of your very own restaurant, you're bombarded with orders for food, drink, and chores, and tasked with performing each order as quickly as possible, usually via a contrived sequence of button presses. Has someone ordered lasagna? You'd better get those fingers warmed up and start hammering at your controller like a boulder just fell, because those sheets aren't gonna lay themselves. Just remember to clean the dishes, take care of the rats, single-handedly jujitsu a robber, and prepare that second lasagna order in the interim. Cook Serve Delicious 2 is a twofold exercise in plate spinning and stress management. Orders roll in on a timer, which gradually ticks down. If you don't prepare an order in time, the customer will leave angry and generate bad buzz. The game's shorthand for a bad review on TripAdvisor, or whatever it is the kids do when they're outraged that their artisan soup didn't arrive in literally 10 seconds. Buzz affects how many customers you're likely to attract on a given day, so you'll want to fill your cheeks with as much of it as possible, as it effectively determines how quickly your restaurant will grow and flourish. In essence, this is the entirety of the Cook Serve Delicious experience. Taking their cues from an obscure PS1 game called, and excuse my pronunciation, Ore Nori Uri, Yeah, the were That one. These games are based almost entirely around these rapid fire cooking challenges ebb and flow of managing your restaurant's orders and buzz, and very little else. You take control of your kitchen in five minute bursts, each meant to represent a whole day, complete with rush hours, weather, and a day-night cycle, all of which ultimately result in you frantically smashing your keyboard for the 40th time, just hoping that the hand cramps let up before someone orders another burrito. In school, Cook Serve Delicious games aren't the kind that you can play for hours at a time, but are rather geared towards quick bursts, both because that early onset RSI won't let you play for more than a couple of days at a time, but also because it's so hyper-focused on a single experience, the stress of the kitchen, that the experience of playing doesn't really vary too much. This isn't necessarily a bad thing. I admire Cook Serve Delicious, both one and two because of their laser focus. They take a simple idea and amplify it until it deafens. Rush Hour isn't just a time of day, it's an event, complete with grandiose music and its own title cards, as if announcing the arrival of some great calamity. Food isn't just a texture on a plate either, it's an entire sensory experience. These games are excellent at giving you punchy, immediate feedback for just about every action you take in the kitchen. Even an action as simple as layering lettuce on a burger is met with a satisfying thwack as if hurled onto the plate by How To Basic. While every single mouth-wateringly rendered recipe has its own array of squelching, spattering, thunking sound effects and animations to accompany every ingredient layered, beaten and prodded. These are games that are all about the small things, bombarding you one by one to the point of sensory overload. The way sashimi is drawn, the way your vacant, dead-eyed customers shuffle in and out of the background, the adrenaline hit of a perfect rush hour. If there's one little touch I'm particularly fond of, it's the calm after the storm at the end of each day of cooking, where one customer will always inevitably sneak in one minute from closing, and then has to stand awkwardly at the counter making cold, awkward eye contact with nothing but the sound of sizzling food in the background. We talk a lot about realism in video games, but nothing is realer than this. And like I say, you can't play these games for too long in a single sit-in, but you'll want to come back to them again and again for all of these little touches, if just for the satisfaction of hearing the ping of an order going out correctly, or to feel the heart-sinking shame unique to realising you just put the wrong dressing on a Caesar salad. 
Cooks of Delicious' maximalist focus, expanding a hundred different little things to centre stage, really imbues it with a character and a charm all of its own. And beyond the button mashing, there is a little more content around the edges too. It's not really enough to pull you away from the main game for any length of time, but when you're not crisping in the unbearable heat of the kitchen, you can browse and practice new recipes, catch up with the building's emails, the game's closest analogue to any sort of linear story, or a feature that's new to the second game, you can redecorate your restaurant as if it were a dress-up game on Newground circa 2001. The emails, in particular, while a short distraction, are a highlight for me. There's a comedic, dystopian future aesthetic running through the game, where it's implied that civilization now lives in Judge Dredd-style megatowers in the aftermath of an array of cataclysms so pedestrian and absurd that life can't help but go on in denial. The game's emails are exceedingly well-written and charming in their depiction of a world keeping calm and carrying on, and oddly enough, for me at least, they've also come to represent one of Cookserve Delicious 2's greatest flaws. One of the most interesting things about Cookserve Delicious Dos is just how much bigger it tries to be than the first game. A look at the game's Steam store page advertises that it has over 200 foods, over 400 levels, 60 plus hours of experience. And these numbers translate into just how openly structured the game is. The first game only followed the rise of a single restaurant from rags to riches, and although you would occasionally be carted away to take place in brulee burningly difficult cooking competitions, the vast majority of the game took place in your restaurant, grinding your fingers down to nubs as your clientele morphed from the great unwashed to the greater unwashed. In Cookserve Delicious 2 though, you're free to work for other restaurants and are offered a godlike freedom over your own restaurant. You can alter a lot of the parameters of the game to adjust the difficulty and overall experience to your liking. Don't like rush hour? Delete it. Don't like how much buzz you've gained? Lower it. The restaurant isn't really simulated as if it were a real place anymore, but it's used more like a tool. The focus seems to be more on the chef, the player, and their growth into mastery rather than the story of a single restaurant. For me, the biggest indication of this switch in tone is the game's progression. In both Cookserve Delicious 1 and 2, your goal is to attain a 5-star restaurant. However, whereas in the first game this was achieved by performing restaurant-specific tasks like opening your restaurant for 20 days in a row or serving certain amounts of food, perhaps an indication that Michelin have really let their standards slip, in Cookserve Delicious 2 you earn stars by gaining experience points in any restaurant or for any positive action. As a fan of the first Cookserve Delicious, this is arguably my biggest problem with the sequel. By opening itself up, 2 has essentially removed the central narrative of the player's restaurant rising through the ranks, and this is reflected in the wide, aimless structure of the game. Gone are the original Cookserve Delicious' restaurant-focused gimmicks like social media management, dating elements, and food inspectors. There's no more betting on individual days, and a lot fewer emails about your restaurant itself. It's kind of intangible, but it doesn't really feel like a simulation anymore. Choosing what to do with your day has been made equivalent to choosing a song in free play in Guitar Hero or Rock Band. And this is a shame, because personally, I think the original game was so entertaining because the restaurant felt grounded in its quirky world. There were enough goofy simulation elements and enough distractions beyond the food itself that your restaurant felt connected to the lunacy portrayed in the emails you received at the end of each day. It often felt as much like a people watching simulator as a restaurant sim and your brief, direct interactions with people were often the glue that held its journey together and provided the variety and the context to keep you going. There was a larger sense of purpose binding each day together. My biggest gripe with Cookserve Delicious 2 is that it doesn't really feel like it has purpose. It's a cooking game where you occasionally read emails and pin the booth divider on the donkey, but the experience never really feels cohesive or immersive. Everything you do is in service of filling up a nondescript experience bar, and the narrative of your restaurant just seems to be that it, it exists as a vessel for earning more experience. The emphasis on the player crafting their own difficulty has also played havoc with the game's natural progression. Serendipitous moments in the first game, like for example when the orders would slow down and you'd be given a relaxing moment to just sit and observe your restaurant are gone. If you want a quiet moment, you'll have to tune your difficulty to make it happen, which kind of removes the whole serendipity aspect in the first place. And I'm aware that these might seem like nebulous criticisms, but the lack of purpose weighs heavily over this game. What once felt authentic has now been boiled down to a list of numbers. You can collect an absurd number of gold medals to unlock an inconsequential new trim for your restaurant. 
you can open your restaurant with harder settings to boost your XP as much as possible, and you can distract yourself with some goofy ass emails in between before you do it all again. It's a satisfying score attack game, but the sense of simulation has been lost, which meshes uneasily with the remnants of simulation, most notably the buzz mechanic, still remain. But hey, who am I to judge a game for what it isn't, just because it's got a 2 in the title? Maybe this isn't the same simulation game as the first Cook Serve Delicious, and maybe that's okay. If there's one clear praise to be sung about the change in direction, it's that the addition of more has also been a good thing. The abundance of new recipes gives you a lot of new stress to sink your teeth into, and the sheer amount of visual tweaks and new additions ensure that the little things that make these games so great have grown exponentially in number. Even the new open structure isn't entirely a misstep either, as it does potentially alleviate a lot of the issues surrounding the first game's ever escalating, bone breaking difficulty. When the going gets tough, sometimes the ability to plug in a pacifier and ask the game to go easy on you for a little while is appreciated. I'm conflicted about Cook Serve Delicious 2, because if the video up to this point hasn't been clear, I love its foundations. The core Cook Serve Delicious experience is as addictive and stressful and funny as ever. It's just a shame that everything around its peripheries has taken such an unexpected and intangible nosedive. I think what's most confusing is that you can't pin down what's gone wrong with the new Cook Serve Delicious in simple terms. You can't attribute it to a single change in direction or theme. There are just a lot of little and big tweaks, some of which work and unfortunately most of which don't. And it's that awkward conflict because it's hard to go back to the original because there are big changes that work in Cook Serve Delicious 2. In particular, the game's ethos of more carries over to the way you play. The first game's controls were already hugely customizable, but I feel like that's only been expanded tenfold here. Want to make it so that you have to type out dong repeatedly to assemble a lasagna? Go for it. Personally, I'm still a fan of the default controller option, which essentially turns the game into an alternate version of DDR where you hammer in Grand Theft Auto cheat codes as quickly as possible. Also because playing with a keyboard inherently expects you to press a button that isn't O for olives, because O is already taken by onions, and I don't think my brain will ever be wired to accept that as okay. I honestly think I'd sooner welcome a type in of the dead style spin-off where you have to painstakingly type out each ingredient than press this for this. That's why it's so great that the option is there to change it, and I think that is one benefit of Cook Serve Delicious 2 giving you more options. I think the game needed a bit more authorial intent, a bit more of the creator's hand guiding you down a preset path, to provide some sense that what you're doing is worthwhile or affects anything at all. But clearly, giving the player a greater degree of choice isn't entirely unappreciated. It's just a shame that the brush of choice has been so broadly applied at the expense of any cohesion. Ultimately, I guess when you look at it on its own terms, as a score attack game, Cook Serve Delicious 2 is undeniably a good game. The difficulty is scalable with a high skill ceiling, the presentation is punchier than before, the controls are snappy and customizable, it doubles down on the stress of the kitchen, and although it isn't integrated as well as in its predecessor, the writing is still as goofy and lovable as ever. There's a lot to like here, and if you haven't played an Ore no Ryuri or Cook Serve Delicious before, you're in for a treat regardless of where you start. For me though, the first Cook Serve Delicious is still the one to go for. When my stomach is empty and I'm looking for a cheeky bout of masochism, there's something so much more satisfying about the focused simulation of the first game, even if on paper it lacks about a bajillion different things in comparison to its successor. Cook Serve Delicious 2 is proof of that old adage that less is sometimes more. And I'll keep playing it. Those dong lasagnas aren't going to assemble themselves after all, but amidst the stress of its arcade madness, I worry that I'll only ever be able to recognise it for what it isn't, rather than appreciate it for what it is. Thank <laughs> you.